Welcome to the first of hopefully many tutorials on Stata. This first tutorial is obviously it's going to be an introduction on how to use Stata and what it is and and so forth. So what is Stata? It's a, it's a programming language and a software package and it's really a very powerful tool for doing uh, analysis of household survey data and other kind of uh, statistical analysis. So uh, let's just get started. So we have, we have several windows here. Uh, I am right now in the, typing in the command window, and as an example of what I could type, two one plus three. Uh, you can type all kinds of commands. Di is short for display. Uh, the tutorial. You can type. You can display text. Uh, if you could spell it right, tutorial. Um, so that's a DI command, which is actually going to be very useful when you, for when you write programs and you want to do debugging. Um, now, for writing text, I like to use compound quotes because it looks smart when you use them, and it allows you to enclose uh, double quotes in your text. For example, here are some double quotes, and the double quotes uh, show up right here in yellow. Now, whenever you type commands, uh, they, uh, the results go in the results window, which is this window above the command window. On the left, you see your command history. If you want to repeat a command, you can just click on it. Uh, you can also, if you're on a Mac, and I'm doing this demo on a Mac, but I'll switch to a PC when I get a PC to replace my dying Mac. You can, on the Mac, you can type function page up. On the PC, you can probably just type page up or something uh, to go through your command history and repeat the commands uh, without having to type them over again. Okay, so we are going to use uh, compound quotes when we're uh, displaying text from now on. Um, and so I just want to put that out there now so that uh, you know why I do it rather than just using the plain double quotes. Um, let's take a look at how Stata treats data. And we're going to look at what variables are in Stata because it's a slightly nuanced compared to what you are familiar with in the math class. Data is uh, actually treated like columns or, or vectors in Stata. So first we need to use a data set and Stata comes in with Stata comes with built-in data sets that you can use and to access them you use the sysuse command. Now one data set is called auto. So this command just loaded the built-in data set. Uh, now on the right you can see the variables that are in this data set. Another way to view them is to type D and enter. D is short for describe. And you can see that um, the, the list of variables are presented. Uh, on the left you have the variable name and that's how you refer to it when you're typing. And on the right here you have the uh, just a description. This is a label. This is the variable label. You can label variables to give it some description. Um, you can also find out what notes there are in the data set and this shows that this is from consumer reports. And uh, some of the information that comes with D is it tells you what type of variable. Is it a string? Is it integer? Is it a floating point with a decimal, room, with a decimal place? Um, and uh, for categorical variables you have you can have a value label. Now let's take a look at the the categorical variable. Let's take a look at foreign. Um, let's just do tab foreign. So the foreign variable is really just a categorical variable that labels, that classifies uh, the observations um, as you know, as, as is foreign or domestic. Now, this is going to make more sense when I when we browse the data. So if I want to just take a look at the data, I can type bro for brow and it'll open up a browser window. So these are all the variables along the top. Make, price, miles per gallon, rep 78, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, these are all the observations. So there's, this, is a, this is a data point, right? Um, and you can see red is a, just means it's a text type of data. And then these are, the black is numerical. The, now, if you look at the foreign variable, it's actually a numerical variable. It's either zero, and zero corresponds to domestic. Zero uh, has a valued label of domestic, right? And if I scroll down, there are foreign vehicles, and one, as you can see, one is a value label of foreign. So domestic, zero, foreign, one. So I'm just going to close this data browser. Oh, just one more thing. Sometimes you'll see a dot here. And what a dot means is it's a missing value. So there's, like on household survey data, if there's a non-response, you might get a, you would get a dot there. 
and a missing value. There are, there are different types of missing values. You can get uh, a little bit sophisticated with missing values, but we won't look at that right now, maybe a little bit later uh, in, a, in another tutorial. So you cannot execute commands like from the command window or run any do files, which we'll get into later, while the browser is open or while the editor is open. And the editor is just a browser window that allows you to change the data. See right here, we can't change the data, we can only look at it. So I'm just going to Apple W to close that. And the label for the variable foreign, you can see, is origin. So let's do label list. It lists all the uh, labels in here. We can even do label list origin. But since, ooh, I should uh, spell it right. But since there's only one uh, value label defined, uh, you know, there, it only shows origin anyway. So zero corresponds to domestic, and one corresponds to um, foreign. And so we saw that there are different uh, data types. There's string, integer, float. Um, this is defined as byte because it's only going to be uh, zero and one, I suppose. So. Um, let's try doing something with some data. Let's generate a new variable and let's let's suppose that uh, um, we want to generate a variable to represent the number of gallons we have. So let's call it gallons. And we're just going to assign them uh, all a value of 5, say. Um, or actually, let's generate all is missing. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll, we're going to change this manually. So let's do this, edit. Edit is like bro, like browser command, but it allows you to actually change the variable. So we can do, you know, 5, 5, 5, 3, 4, 7, 7. Oh, oh, I've been going too fast. 6, 6, 8, 3, and I'll just leave the rest. There's a lot of entries. I don't want to do it manually. So then um, let's close the browser window. And uh, this, this shows the uh, commands that are equivalent to what I just did manually by typing into the browser. It just replaced gallons, uh, replaced certain values at, uh, at different observation numbers. Right? But what I'm going to do now is just replace everything. So replace gallons equals 5. And so let's browse that. Um, see, and then all the value for gallons is equal to 5. So this is how Stata treats data. Every time you, it treats variables, every time you create a variable, you, vec you effectively make a column vector. And uh, let's try to do something else with these column vectors. So let's close the browser window so we can start typing again. Let's, uh, now that we've actually created this variable gallons, let's label it. So label variable gallons, and let's label it with something. Um, let's call it... Uh, gallons of gasoline available for uh, consumption or for use. Let's make that for use. Okay, so let's describe. Now we can see our variable gallons there. It's a, by default, it was made a floating point number. And we have a variable label now too. And so let's do something else. Let's generate a distance. And that's going to be uh, miles per gallon times gallons. Aye. Times gallons. And you don't have to type the whole variable name as long as it's uh, not ambiguous. Uh, if there's nothing else that starts with G-A-L-L-O, like if there's no gal uh, galoons or galots, then you just have gallo. And it's going to generate this distance. So let's label that to label variable distance, and we don't have to type the whole thing, as, let's use compoundable quotes, and say distance is a distance you, well, let's say average distance can travel on uh, gallons. Okay, so let's describe that. And we have our distance variable within it with a label. Always good to label your variables so that people know what you're talking about. And let's browse the data again. Okay, so we have a different distance you can go depending on how many gallons you have, the same for everyone, and 
what your mileage, what kind of mileage you can get. So 22 times 5, you just multiply each of these by 5, you'll get the answer, right? So 110, uh, 85, 110, 100, uh, it's going to be 75. Uh, so basically, it's just an element by element multiplication. This times this, this times this. If these numbers were different, it wouldn't be all multiplied by 5. And if you had different numbers for miles per gallon. Of course, if you change gallons now, it won't change distance. You'd have to recalculate distance. Okay, but this is just an, an illustration of how Stata treats data. Now, there are certain things you can do with data. I suppose you want to know what the average uh, um, of miles per gallon or, or distance is, and we can do that pretty easily. We can just use the summarize command, in short for sum. We can sum uh, distance. Okay, so uh, the number of observations is 74. That's how many, uh, we actually have, we have 74 observations in our data set. So, uh, but if there was a missing value, missing value in MPG or in gallons, then this number would be lower. But the, uh, but getting back to the summarize command, you can see that the, the mean of that vector for distance is 106.48, standard deviation is is given and it has some other information like min and max. If you want more information, just put uh, just put comma d after it, and you can get uh, percentiles and uh, a few other things. Uh, now let's try that on gallons. Uh, okay. Now the mean is five because there is only five. In the, uh, the observations are only five. There's no standard standard deviation is zero because it's a constant. Constant is the same for everything. Now, suppose we want to do something, uh, suppose we want to know what the uh, miles per gallons are, some MPG. And we, say that, we can see that the average uh, miles per gallon is 21.3, about. Now, what about for if we want to divide by foreign and domestic? So, let's try that, some MPG, if foreign equals zero. This is for um, domestic vehicles. Right? Sum MPG if foreign, did I spell it wrong? Sum MPG if foreign, I ah, double equals, yes. Comparison requires a double equals. Okay, so then we can see the foreign, uh, the MPG of the foreign vehicles, uh, sorry, of the domestic vehicles. And now let's try the uh, foreign vehicles. All right, so it's different. Now, instead of doing this manually, suppose there are many categories, whether it was foreign big vehicles, foreign small vehicles, domestic big, domestic small. Um, you can just take the categorical variable and do the mean uh, for each of those uh, with one command. It would be by, S, by sort. So you do it by uh, your categorical variable, foreign. And so, and S means sort because uh, Stata likes to s have things sorted before it. Well, Stata requires that certain things be sorted before it actually does certain calculations. And then we can do some uh, MPG. And we can see that, uh, sorry, so for the foreign value being domestic, that is for domestic vehicles, we have 19.82 is the mean, and that's the same we got here as with foreign equals zero, which is foreign, uh, which is for domestic vehicles, and 24.77273, the, uh, the values match. Now you can also do D, put it in detail. Right? And uh, again, you get the same uh, information, uh, but, but more of it. Okay, now let's go back to the sum command, um, and I'm going to show you something about um, return values. So let's do sum mpg and return list. So some commands are R class commands, and what they do is they store the results of the command in what are called return values. Now there are other kinds of um, values. There's e return. And then there's s return. Now, the uh, the sum command didn't put do anything with that. It's an R class command, and it stored uh, the results in the R values. But what's really cool about this is that you can actually have access to the mean and, and the variance and, and the standard deviation. Um, so if we do this, di r mean. It's, you know, we can actually store that rather than actually ha having to go in here and copy and paste. Okay? And what's, um, what you should note is that the return value 
is going to be the return value for the most recent command that actually, the most recent R class command, the most recent command that affected the, the return value. So if I type D, and then I type the R value, it's going to give me new R values, and it's, uh, the R values from the sum command are going to disappear. Um, now if I type row and for the browser, and then I just close it, and I do return list, I still have the values from the D command because the browser command does not affect our values. Right? So let's go back to some mpg. Okay. And return. So suppose we want to capture the variable and store it somewhere. We can do we can store it in what's called a local macro. And now a, a macro or a global macro. Let's let's just use local macros for now. A macro is what you might think of as really what you used to think of variable as before the state, state of tutorial. Now you think of variable here as a vector of data. And, um, but a local macro is what you would have thought of a variable as. So let's just look at that. Local, uh, let's call it, uh, M, uh, well, let's just call it x. Well, no, it's not very descriptive. MPG and this won't be confused with our variable MPG because well, I'll just show you local MPG equals uh, local let's call it average MPG equals R mean okay now suppose you want to refer to this average MPG you would not do this you would not do do average MPG because you know if it's just presented like that, Stata thinks it's a variable, that is a vector variable, and it looks in the list here and says, oh, it's not there, so it says not found. You refer to it like this. You use the, you proceed it with a back tick, and at the end you put an apostrophe, and voila. So our mean, which is 21.2792, uh, repeating, is here. So you can display it by doing this. Well, let's just save ourselves from typing. DI average miles per gallon. Hey. Hey. Well, I messed that one up, didn't I? Okay. Uh, DI average miles per gallon. Equals. Well, let's use our, our compound quotes. Average miles per gallon equals. Have a. Average MPG. And let's do this and put with apostrophe and yeah. And if you want to space it out and make it look more friendly, there you go. So that's sort of an introduction right now, just a very brief introduction. In the next file, we will look, sorry, in the next tutorial, we will look at making do files because what we want to do is we want to put our commands in a in, in, a, in, a, in a do file, in a specific file that we can run over and over because that's typically how people program. They just write files and, and execute them. And of course, it's much more efficient. So that's the, uh, that concludes the introduction to Stata. Do uh, play around with the built-in data sets. There's another one if you want to use sysuse life exp. Uh, is it life exp? Ah. Okay, well, I'll just give you one more lesson. If you want to start using um, different data sets, you have to explicitly say to Stata, clear the data set if you already have a data set in memory. So um, we want to switch to the life expectancy data set, and you can see it's a different data set with different variables. And look at, if you look at the notes, uh, you know, this data set's from the World Bank, and then, you know, it's, it makes some, it has some notes about some of the uh, variables. If you look at this, the region, country, pop growth, these are all explained, region, country, average annual growth. Safe water, um, you don't really know what it is. It's been a variable label. They put it in the notes for some reason. So if you do a note, and you can look at safe water. Oh, okay, access to safe water. Percentage of population has access to safe drinking water. Um, so anyways, there's just another data set that you can play around with. And if you want to load different data sets, you, uh, you should use the clear option after using uh, with a comma with a comma and then you can just play around with different data sets and do sum and tab um, tab is good for categorical variables 
and then you can do cross tabs. You can do like you know if you have two categorical variables, you can do tab four and in the second categorical variable. This doesn't have it just yet, uh, but we'll look at using other data sets that do have it, and uh, hopefully we'll start using a uh, a household survey household survey data set in uh, in a tutorial soon. Okay, so that's it. Good luck and. Looking forward to uh, the next tutorial. At least I am. I hope you are too.